In today's video, we'll be testing and tearing down a brand new battery from Epoch Batteries. This is their new Elite 460 V2, meaning this is a ginormous 12 volt battery with 460 amp hours of capacity. And the Elite means it has Bluetooth connectivity, it has built in heaters, and also supports a Victron communications. Now I actually tested their Elite 460 battery last year. This is the version one, and they made some improvements and that's why they launched the version two. Now putting both batteries side by side, you can hardly tell a difference. They're basically the same size and form factor. This is the previous generation. This is the newer battery. So let's just look at some of the differences. One of the first differences is right here, the power button. You'll notice that this has Bluetooth connectivity inside the battery. If we look at the new version, they've upgraded this. So now you just have a power button here, but the Bluetooth connectivity is actually in this dongle. Now on the left hand side, you have the previous generation state of charge indicator. And on the right hand side, you have the new one. So this one was very limited because you basically just have one slot for every 10% of the battery. You can see it's fully charged right now, giving you 10 slots, but it would show five slots if it was at 50% state of charge. Now the new one is great because it gives you much more information. For example, now we actually have a battery percentage, 62%. You have a voltage showing 13.1 volts and it tells you the current going in or out of the battery. So if you're charging at 20 amps, it's gonna show that. Or if you're discharging at 200 amps, it will show that on the screen. The other benefit is that this actually has the Bluetooth built into it. Now the benefit of having Bluetooth in this dongle versus actually in the battery itself means that you can have this little meter mounted where you are going to be, and then your battery can reside in the battery compartment away from where you are. So you'll actually get much better Bluetooth reception with this than with the actual battery having the Bluetooth built into it. Now Epoch goes through all these upgrades on their website. If you check out the listing of the product, I'll include a link to it down in the video description. But basically you have improved Victron communications, you have improved scalability, meaning you can connect up to 16 of these batteries in parallel versus just four on the previous generation. Um, the battery does have UL listed components on the inside, including the fuses and battery cells, and they're hoping to get the battery UL certified as a whole. You have improved Bluetooth connectivity, meaning you can connect to all 16 batteries in one single dashboard. You can upgrade the firmware over the air, and I already talked about the upgraded battery gauge. Now I'm really interested to see how this battery is different on the inside versus the version one. So at the end of the video, we'll be tearing down both these batteries and we'll compare them side by side to see if there's any differences. But before tearing it down, I wanna do all the performance testing on this. So first, we'll do a capacity test to see if we can get the full 460 amp hours that it's rated for. Then we'll test the heaters and the built-in low temperature charging protection to see if that works properly. And then we'll do a max load test to see if we can uh, pull the max continuous rated output without the battery shutting down. Let's get started. So in my first test, I wanna see if we can pull the full rated capacity of the Epoch 460 amp hour battery. And you'll notice I have a slightly different testing setup. Now the goal on my channel is to get the most accurate results as possible. And that's why I picked up this BK Precision DC electronic load. Basically this is a massive load tester. It's lab grade and it's good for up to 1500 watts. Now what's really cool about this electronic load is that it connects into your PC with a special app and it allows you to map the exact voltage curve as you discharge the battery and it tracks the total amp hour capacity. Now this electric load also has the ability to set the exact current that you want to discharge the battery at. So a 0.2C rate for this battery is 92 amps. So that's what I'll be setting this test to. It's around 1177 watts. Now I've topped off the battery with my adjustable power supply here. It's at 14.6 volts, so I'll take that off and then we can start the test. So I've just started the test. You can see it's set to 92 amps, so it is pulling 92 amps. This is the voltage of the battery and the wattage that we are pulling, which is around 1200 watts. Now I've set this to go all the way down until the battery gets to 9.5 volts. Once it hits 9.5 volts, the test will stop and we'll be able to check the total amp hours that we pulled. So the test has been running for a little over five hours and the BMS finally shut off the battery from low voltage. I'll go ahead and bring the results up on the screen. Now on the bottom of the screen, you'll see the results of the capacity test. We pulled a total of 477 amp hours. Now remember this battery is rated at 460, so that's over 17 amp hours above the rated capacity. That is really good. Now if we look at the voltage curve during this discharge test, you can see that it's extremely flat. Now, other batteries I've tested 
the battery voltage starts to sag at the end of the test. And this one does not, it stays extremely flat. So this does have higher quality cells inside. Now, when I first got this battery, it was the perfect time to test the low temperature charging protection in the built-in heaters because they'd been sitting on a freezing delivery truck all day. I connected it up with my smart app. It was sitting right around 33 degrees. So I connected up my high powered charger and tried to charge the battery. Now at first I didn't recognize any power going in to charge the batteries, but with my clamp meter, I did notice that 10 amps were going into it, suggesting that the heaters were enabled, but it was not charging the cells. I let this sit for about an hour. And when I came back, it was starting to actually charge the battery. It was putting 44 amps into the battery and the cells had heated up from 33 degrees all the way up to almost 60 degrees. So yes, the built-in heaters did function and the battery started charging. Now in my final test, before I do a teardown on the battery, I wanna do a max load test. Now in the owner's manual, they state that it can handle a continuous 230 amps or about 3000 watts. Now, in order to pull that much power from the battery, I have two inverters. So this first inverter is an Exantrix ProWatt 2000, and I have two heaters connected up for a total of 2000 watts. So this is a 1500 watt heater, and that's a 500 watt heater. So we'll be pulling 2000 watts here. And then for the secondary setup, I have another 2000 watt inverter. This is a lifetime 2000 watt inverter, and I only have 1000 watts connected up to this one because I'm using much smaller wire gauge. So that should give us around 3000 watts total. Now, in order to see what's happening, I will be using the smart app, this clamp meter, and then also I'll be comparing what we see on this little screen it gives us the battery voltage, the state of charge and the current going in and out of the battery. Okay, so it took me a minute to get the inverters powered on and I turned on each heater, um, but they are running at peak load. It's been running for almost four minutes right now. And if you take a look at this screen here, we're actually pulling over 230 amps we are going uh, up near 252 amps peak. Let's see what the clamp meter shows. So we're pulling about 77 amps on the small inverter, and we're pulling about 174 amps on the large inverter. So if we add up the amperage from the small inverter, which was 77 amps, and the large inverter, which was 174 amps, that's right around 250 amps. Now I also checked the smart app, and it is also reporting the same uh, amperage. It's a little bit over 3000 watts. So I've decided to let the test go a little bit longer than 15 minutes just because it took me a bit to get everything up and running. But we have definitely been running at this load for 15 minutes now. And if you take a look at the meter, we are still pulling 245 to 250 amps. And we dropped from 76% state of charge down to 63% state of charge, even with this ginormous load. So it just shows you how big of a battery this is. So if you're looking for something to run um, either a large load or a load for a long period of time, this battery can definitely do it. So if we compare the performance of the version two versus the version one, they both are pretty similar. We got 477 amp hours of capacity out of this version. And out of the previous version, I got 470 amp hours. So we did get a little bit more capacity from the newer version. And also when I did a discharge test, well, this one's rated for 230 amps continuous output, but the gen one was actually rated for 300 amps continuous output. So I'm interested to see what's on the inside to see if they have a smaller BMS on this one or if it still has the same 300 amp BMS or if they're just recommending a lower amperage so you get better longevity out of the battery cells. Now, I will say that the um, owner's manual on the new version is way better. It is so detailed, it has uh, basically everything you need to know if you know nothing about lithium iron phosphate batteries and the previous um, owner's manual was like four pages and it left a lot of information out. So the new manual has so much information. So um, you'll feel much better setting up this battery and wiring it up and setting up all the dip switches with this owner's manual versus the previous uh, generation. So um, let's go ahead and take the top off and see if there are any differences between the new version and old version of the battery. Fast forward 30 minutes or so, and I have the lids off both of the batteries. So this is the version one, and this is the version two. Let's see if we can find any differences. Now let's dive into the new version of the battery first, and I'll give you a quick overview of what's happening here. So right here, you have your main negative terminal. Right here, you have your main positive terminal. So this right here is the battery management system, or what is often called the BMS. 
So you have your main battery negative terminal down here, which is routed through the BMS and then out right here. And these are massive bus bars and uh, they can handle a lot of amperage. Now for the positive, you have your positive here that goes through this large fuse. This is a 12 volt, 400 amp fuse. And then it routes down to the main positive terminal of the cells inside. So positive terminal here, negative terminal through the BMS to here. Now, one thing that I did notice is that this BMS looks a lot larger than the previous version. At least the heatsink is larger. I looked on this, I could not see any numbers suggesting the amperage that this is rated for, but the heatsink is much larger. Now, right here, you have this thermal pad that allows for heat transfer. So you have this heatsink here with this thermal pad that meets up to this large heatsink that's on the lid of the battery which goes out to that heat sink on the outside. So the heat of the BMS can escape the inside of the battery and it doesn't heat up the internal cells. So here's a closer look at the newer style fuse. There are four bolts that you can remove. So if you need to replace it, you can. Now I've never seen a fuse like this. So I did look up the brand and the model number. So it's made by SET, which is S-E-T. And the model is TEX150-R1N. Now it states this is a 400 amp fuse and it appears to be a thermal fuse. So there is some sort of metal in here that's designed to melt away at a certain heat. And so it breaks the electrical connection between the bus bars here. I'm guessing that is around 150 degrees Celsius because that is written right here. Pretty interesting. I have not seen a fuse like this. Now, one other thing that I've noticed with this battery versus the previous version is that all of the connections use these high quality snap connectors. Even on the BMS, you have these high quality snap connectors over here as well. Well, in the previous version, they were all just glued down to the BMS. So um, trying to repair those or replace them um, would be quite difficult on the previous version, but this one, everything just snaps together. So now we're gonna look at the version one to see how it differs. So the main layout is pretty similar. You have your main negative terminal over here. You have your main positive terminal right here. So your main positive terminal goes through this large T-class 500 amp fuse and then down to the main positive connection on your cells inside. As for the main negative terminal, it goes down to the main negative connection of the cells through these heavy duty bus bars through the BMS and then out to the main negative terminal. So that layout's pretty similar. I did notice that the BMS here or the battery management system doesn't have quite as large as heat sink as the newer version. Um, you still have this thermal pad here and the heat sink in the lid. So the heat transfer can go out of the case, but the heat sink on the actual BMS is much smaller. I also noticed that the BMS is using um, this glue to hold these connections in place versus the higher quality uh, quick snap connections on the other BMS. Um, overall, it's still very good build quality, but you can definitely see some improvements on the newer version. Now guys, can I say it's such a relief not to find any issues inside these batteries like I did a couple weeks ago with that really cheap battery. And these batteries are such higher quality. It was really cool to see the difference between the version two and the version one. They look so similar. So I always have to look on the inside and be like, okay, okay, this is the newer version. But I also really liked the battery meter upgrade on this one too. So you could see like what was happening with the battery without even you know, having to connect with Bluetooth. So let me know what you guys think about these batteries. Um, down in the comment section. I'd really love to see what you guys have to think about them. Now, as always, thank you, thank you, thank you guys so much for watching my videos. Without you guys, my channel wouldn't be anything at all. And I do recognize that you guys are a huge part of it. Now, if you did like this video, please smash the thumbs up button to let me know I'm doing something right. And I'll recommend a couple other videos that you guys can check out as well. And don't forget, I do have a basic consulting service. If you happen to have a question about a power station or connecting solar panels up to it or how to connect certain solar panels together, you can reach out to me and I can help you with those questions. We'll see you guys in the next video.